So, you've got yourself a family, unlucky. And now you're looking for a nice zero emissions vehicle to take them from A to B. Well, you're in luck because I've got two of the best on the market with me here today. In the black corner, is the Ford Mustang Mach-E, Ford's first attempt at creating an electric car for the masses. And in the weird greeny corner is the Skoda Enyaq IV, their first effort at making an electric car. I've never compared a Mustang against a Skoda before, but we live in strange times where both these cars cost similar money, 40,000 pounds. So today we find out which one is worth yours. Obviously looks are important, so let's start by analysing the designs. The Mark E is clearly trying to be the more stylish of the two. Well, it's trying to be something, a real Mustang for a start. So there are some familiar pony car design elements including the badges, no Ford badges here incidentally, the headlights and the rear lights. I'm not a huge fan of the moustache element on the front grille, but it's lower and sleeker than the Enyaq, which might count for something in some people's eyes. The Enyaq, meanwhile, looks like the bigger of the two, but this pair are actually pretty close in size, though the Skoda does sit slightly taller and has a more upright, less coupe-like appearance. It isn't trying to be as fashionable, perhaps, which might suit anyone with a preference for flying under the radar, but the bodywork has some nice sharp creases, there's a sporty front splitter under the big aggressive grille, and this version comes with massive 21-inch alloys. Ultimately, they're both good-looking, just in slightly different ways. Now, let's look at versions and the key specs. Now, this is where things get very complicated. Now, you probably need a spreadsheet or a pen and paper, or just listen to Uncle Rory. I'll talk you through it, shall I? In the UK, basically, we get two versions of the Skoda Enyaq, an IV60 and an IV80, and those numbers correspond to the battery sizes. The smaller battery has a 58 kilowatt hour net battery pack, while the big one has a 77 kilowatt hour net battery pack. And in terms of range, the small one will take you 256 miles, while the big one will go 333 miles. Both of those are rear wheel drive. There's also an all wheel drive called the ATX, but we're not talking about that today. How does that compare with the Mustang Mach E? Well, again, there's a standard range and an extended range with different battery sizes, either 70 kilowatt hours or 91 kilowatt hours. And the range depends on whether you go for all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. I'll give you the rear wheel drive numbers to keep things simple. Small battery rear wheel drive will take you 273 miles. Big battery rear wheel drive will go 379 miles. So essentially what you need to know is all versions of this car go a little bit further than their equivalent versions of that car, but not by much. You're welcome. Boot space in the Mach-E is 402 litres or 1,420 litres with the seats folded down. Not bad. In contrast, boot space in the Enyaq is 585 litres by default with 1,710 litres with the seats folded flat much bigger. To its credit, the Mach-E has a front trunk with an extra 81 litres of space, while the Enyaq does not. As for rear passenger space, the Enyaq wins here as well, with impressive leg and headroom. It's extremely generous and the better of the two in this regard. The Mustang is okay in this respect, but if you're a big family, the Enyaq wins. So it's the Skoda that's the more practical car, and in fact it has a bunch of extra features that make it even more practical. For example, in the A-pillar, you've got a little plastic clip which is designed to store a parking ticket or maybe uh, you can hook a coronavirus mask on that. Maybe more useful is in the door, you get umbrellas to protect you from the rain and these just slot in here. No bother whatsoever. There's also cup holders with grippy bottoms that allow you to undo a bottle of water, for example, without using two hands. That's quite a nice touch. And in the boot, check out this feature, it's got an ice scraper built into the boot lid, although I don't know how useful that is because the car does have a preconditioning timer that lets you set the heat according to whatever time of day you want, so it's never going to be icy in the first place. I guess you could probably use it as a camera filter. How do I look? Green? Um, yeah. Or there's this little uh, divider in the boot, which you could use as an even larger ice scraper 
for the times when the planet goes into Arctic meltdown because people like you haven't bought an electric car to protect us from climate change. <sighs> Do your bit. Now, let's talk cash. The Skoda Enyaq is surprisingly affordable. The entry-level 60 version starts at around £32,000 and the big battery model is £42,000. That's really good value for a car that will do 333 miles. In contrast, the Maki is a bit more expensive. The entry-level standard range version costs £41,330, so just over 10 grand more than the Skoda. The extended range starts from just over £46,000, so you pay 5 grand more to get over 100 miles more range. I can see why it would be tempting to go for that. But there's no question that if you're just looking for a cheap way into owning an electric family car, the Skoda is the way to go. Unless maybe you're looking for speed. The Skoda Enyaq, in case anyone was wondering, is not a performance oriented car. No, this is very much a family bus. The entry level 60 comes with a 180 horsepower motor driving the rear wheels and the higher level model, the 80, has a 200 horsepower motor driving the rear wheels. But don't be thinking that because the 80 has more power that it delivers more performance. No, both of those cars do 0 to 62 in pretty much the same time. 0 to 62 in 8.7 and 8.8 .8 seconds respectively. It's not completely rubbish though, 0 to 30 is surprisingly nippy. So if you're pulling away from a standstill at a set of traffic lights, for example, you can really surprise people with the amount of pace that's in this car. The torque is pretty respectable. Likewise, if you're at motorway speeds and you wanna get some overtaking done, you just floor it and it takes off. One thing that isn't so great is that the Enyaq IV uses drum brakes at the rear, old school technology. Now Skoda and the Volkswagen Group will tell you, of course, that electric vehicles don't need disc brakes at the back because they primarily use disc brakes at the front and the electric motor to help slow them down with regeneration. But when you apply the brakes in this from a speed, it definitely feels anemic, shall we say. In the corners, it's, it's okay. As long as you're not hustling it too hard, it doesn't really trip over itself. But more importantly, the suspension is surprisingly good. It's very smooth in comparison to a lot of other electric cars of this size. Remember, this thing is riding on 21 inch wheels, massive alloys, and yet, even though it's a little bit jiggly, it's perfectly acceptable, it's surprisingly smooth. I think that with smaller wheels, maybe the 20s or better yet 19s, this thing will ride almost impeccably. In terms of quietness and refinement, again, I'm really impressed by the Skoda. It's an electric car and they're all quiet, but this, especially is very, very quiet. Even when you accelerate, you don't really hear the motor whining as much as it does in other electric cars. It's actually a really serene, calm place to be. It's so quiet, in fact, that you end up hearing other noises that maybe you don't wanna hear. For example, I've been detecting a weird tapping noise. Whenever you turn on the heated seats and you're at a standstill, you can sort of hear a sort of tap, 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 which gets a bit annoying and it goes away when you reduce the uh, intensity of the heated seat, but it is there. I don't know if it's a bit of a glitch with this car, but it does get ever so slightly annoying. Another thing that's really cool about this Enyaq is that it's got an okay towing ability. It will tow 750 kilos unbraked or 1,000 kilos braked, which means that if you're going on holiday and you want to tow a caravan behind you, for example, then this is a pretty decent car to do it in. It's a pretty decent car to sit in as well. I mean, look at this cabin. It's got this lovely tan leather, bit of gloss black, some chrome. It all looks really premium. I reckon if you sat anyone in this car and covered up the Skoda badge, there's no way they'd guess that this was a Skoda. It's lovely. Look at these, look at the door handles, for example. They look like a work of art. There are some downsides, I will say. For example, down here on the door cards, that little handle down there is a bit plasticky. And also I don't like the fact that these gloss black elements in the center console will end up getting scratched. And even though this infotainment screen is nice and big and looks really premium, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay, for example, I don't like the fact that it has this horrendous touch sensitive volume strip, which makes it a little bit more difficult to control. Having said that, you do get a pretty nice volume knob on the steering wheel and the stereo system itself is absolutely brilliant. As for the Mustang Mach-E, well, if you were expecting it to be a little bit more dynamic, 
well then you'd be right. It's got the Mustang name after all. Basically, the rear wheel drive models are a lot quicker than the rear wheel drive models in the ENIAC range. These will do 0 to 62 in around seven seconds. And they feel, yeah, definitely more punchy, more immediate, much more like a sports car. Very responsive. Obviously, you're paying 10 grand more for the privilege, but if you like going fast, then this is definitely the one to get out of these two cars. Interestingly, it handles a bit better than a Skoda as well. It's not a driver's car, don't get me wrong, but it will handle itself through the twisties with a lot more confidence than the Skoda ENIAC. In fact, if you find a wet, greasy road and you switch the traction control off, it will even do skids, which kind of makes sense. That's what Mustangs do. So credit to Ford for allowing this car to be a little bit more playful than the likes of the ENIAC and other rivals in its class. I wouldn't recommend you do skids while dropping your kids to school, that would be a bit inappropriate, but I've got to give credit where credit's due. It's playful. The Mach-E has three driving modes. There's Whisper, Active and Untamed. Whisper is basically eco, Active is normal, and Untamed is the fast one. Let's press that. When you accelerate, it makes this fake engine noise, if you like, which is meant to make it more involving. I mean, it sounds a bit naff. It doesn't sound like a V8 to me, but if you like that kind of thing, it's there for you. One thing I don't like about the Mach-E, especially in comparison to the Skoda, is the ride. It's very fidgety. The suspension feels a lot more stiffly sprung. I don't know if that's because Ford wanted it to feel like a Mustang, but it doesn't feel like a family car. It's a little bit too nervous over bumps for my liking. It's only got 19 inch wheels too. Remember, the ENIAC had 21 inch wheels and was still smoother. So yeah, Ford has a little bit of work to do where that's concerned. If you want a smooth ride, maybe look at the ENIAC. A quick word on the interior. I do like it on the whole. I love the fact it's got this B&O soundbar across the top of the dashboard and it sounds really good by the way. I love this little screen up here on the dashboard for your driver information and also this portrait oriented display which seems like it's floating just in front of the dashboard. On the whole, I don't think it's quite as premium as the Skoda, which is not a sentence I don't think I've ever said in my entire life, but it's true, look at it. It's not quite as high end or arty or impressive as the ENIAC, but on the whole, it's still a nice cabin to be in. So, which one of these two would I go for? Well, they're quite different, which I like, actually. A lot of people seem to think that electric cars are gonna end up being very, very similar. But these two are like chalk and cheese, which is great. Which one would I go for? Well, if you value space, practicality, and smarts, it's the Skoda, all day long. But if you're a bit of a poser and you value driving dynamics and performance, well then, the Mach-E is definitely worth checking out.